Oh, hey Charles. Hey man. I just came by to look at that project you wanted me to look at. Sure, come on in. Grab a seat. Cool. All right. Is this it? Mm-hmm. Take a look. I've only implemented basic movement so far, but I'm trying to use all the best practices you've been teaching me. Yeah, this is great, man. Something simple and isolated like this is a great way to practice clean coding. Yeah, doing small projects has been really helpful. I start with something basic and then I iterate on it. Like, check this out. At first, I was only gonna do movement, but then I was able to easily add boundary detection. Nice, but looks like you got an exception there. Oh yeah, that's okay. I throw an exception when the player goes out of bounds. Wait, you throw the exception? Well, yeah. Is there something wrong with that? Yeah, exceptions are expensive, so you really want to avoid them, especially in game development. You no, know, I actually read about that somewhere recently, maybe a, a stack overflow, but I don't understand. How am I supposed to handle invalid states? You just handle them. Oh, here, let's look at the code and I'll explain a little bit better. So I see here that you've encapsulated your movement logic within an object that implements the iMovement interface. Nice, thanks. And this method down here called get next position throws an invalid operation exception when the next position is out of bounds, right? Exactly. And in this case, we're using the keyboard movement implementation. Okay, then let's take a look at that. Aha, here's our culprit. It calculates the next position, checks whether or not it's out of bounds, and then throws an exception if it isn't. Right, so what's wrong with that? I thought it was good practice to handle errors with exceptions. You're right, but let's talk about the type of errors you should handle. According to Microsoft, C Sharp's exception handling features help you deal with any unexpected or exceptional situations that occur when a program is running. In other words, something you can't predict or control. Another way I've heard it been said is that an exception should be thrown when a fundamental assumption about the code block has been found to be false. And we can fundamentally assume and predict that the player will eventually go out of bounds. Okay, that's starting to make sense. Now, if the caller of get next position passes in an invalid area, like a rect with a negative width, then that might be a cause for throwing an exception. But even then, I wouldn't suggest it because they're bad for performance and they literally break the execution of your code. They do? Yeah, they're like breakpoints, except you can't hit play again, which means that the objects that throw them could be left in a weird and possibly critical state. Wow, that's crazy. But my class doesn't really have an internal state, so should be fine, right? And to be honest, I haven't seen any performance issues. I mean, it was running fine just a moment ago. Well, yeah, look at what you're running it on. Your PC is a powerhouse. But imagine deploying this to a mobile device. And I'm not talking about the latest iPhone. You need to consider older generation devices too. Hmm, I never really considered that. I don't blame you. It's an easy thing to forget, especially when you're working on something like this. But why don't we take a look at the profiler? We're gonna see how throwing an exception every frame affects your game's garbage collection. The red line represents the amount of garbage being allocated each frame, and the yellow line is the amount of garbage being allocated over time. Hey, can you remind me what garbage collection is again? Of course. Garbage collection is the process of locating and freeing up unused memory. It does this by removing objects that are no longer in use, like the exceptions that you throw each frame. Whenever Unity needs to perform garbage collection, it stops running your program code and only resumes normal execution when the garbage collector has finished all its work. This interruption can cause delays in the execution of your game that lasts anywhere from less than one millisecond to hundreds of milliseconds, depending on how much memory the garbage collector needs to process and on the platform the game is running. Now, if we look back at the profiler, watch what happens when we go out of bounds. Oh my gosh. Yep, all those red spikes are your exceptions turning into garbage. All right, so no more exceptions. Yep, pretty much. Unless it's some special case where you absolutely have to stop the execution of your code, then no more exceptions. Okay, I get it. So instead, I'll just handle the case where the player goes out of bounds, right? Exactly. So basically, I can just remove the exception, and then when the player goes out of bounds, I'll just return the original position. Hey, sounds good to me. Let's test it out. I'll run the scene. And... Awesome. Wow, this is much better. Hey man, thanks for taking the time to show me this. I'm sure I would have been throwing exceptions all over my code. No problem. I just want to make sure you're practicing good habits. Speaking of which, I actually have my own project to get back to. All right, see you later. Definitely. 
Special thanks to my top supporters, Berquist 3D, Darkwish Photography, NZ, Thomas, R-Star, and Trond. <laughs>